Welcome to this module 13, what we're going to be calling a bonus to the teach segment. Oftentimes after we've done a teach or when the team is discussing what the content is that will be included in a module, we'll have a conversation about how we want to show you or model for you what we're teaching in either a clinical example or in the demonstration. After the teach from both George and Ryan, we started to recognize that there are different places where this positivity shows up in sessions. As I started to pull clips based on some of the quotes that Ryan and George both used in their angel dialogue, I started to realize that sometimes a couple can show what looks like positivity when they're really not in stage three yet. Also, sometimes after a step seven, you'll see somebody processing both sides of a positive enactment, that step seven, and you'll hear some of that positive enactment that we're looking for in stage three. But the reality is it hasn't quite installed in their relationship yet. So we had a conversation on our team call about the three different places that this positivity shows up. Sometimes it's actually an avoidance strategy where a couple is coming in and they're positive because they've had a little bit of success. But the truth is that if you push on it just a little bit, it's probably not going to last because it's still so new to them that they don't trust that they can stay there. Or you see it show up at the end of a step seven, where it is honest positivity, but it's more of a redemptive enactment that comes out of a negative place, still brand new, especially early on when you're first doing stage two and you're getting those positive enactments for the first time. It still hasn't installed. What we're actually talking about in this module is that positivity that comes from that stage three couple who understands what it's like to not only show up for your partner in positive ways and respond to them in their pain, but that they've also been responded to. A couple that's able to talk about the impact of that positivity when you stay engaged, this is what it does for me. It de-escalates my anxiety. When you are less critical and anxious, it allows me to feel like I'm not a failure and it allows me to stay engaged. That's a positive enactment that we want to explore and expand in stage three. So what we want to do is let you have a sneak peek into a call that we had where we were discussing how this showed up and you'll see how we start talking about what to call it, how to identify it, and how to help you know the difference between avoidant or tentative positivity that's still a little bit mixed and guarded. We know if we push on and test the content, is not going to last? Or that redemptive positivity when they've done a positive enactment in a step seven and they're starting to understand and explore what it would be like if they could stay in this place. Or what we're really talking about in this module, which is that third level of positivity that's really installed in their relationship where they've had a few reps at it, where they can trust that they can do a repair, and they've really earned the equity of that positivity and that positive cycle in their relationship. So check out this in-process conversation of our team discussing the different ways that this shows up. So I would see that as three different ways of working with positive cycle. You know, a, a stage one or stage two, what Ryan's talking about is, and it could go beyond a whole spectrum, but it could be, it's usually a combination of there are some improvements, but there's also some avoidance through that positive cycle. So it's trying to it's trying to work with both sides of that, right? Then you have the redemptive positive cycle, which is the predictable outcome of needs being met in a negative cycle. So you're getting the positive cycle through the doorway of the negative cycle, right? So that's what your step seven is. That's the body in, body out. When your worst fear is you're going to be rejected and you're actually accepted and loved, you should see the positive cycle as the fruits of that work. But this third level of positive affect is people are actually in a positive place and you want to help them put words to what is actually working. And it's not avoidance. It's not because there's a negative cycle. They're just in this new positive place of safety and they don't have a lot of words. And to me, that's the goal of this stage three part. 
right? And they're always going to relapse and not be able to stay in it. But the more that we can help them understand what they're doing and how that's working, and I just that installs it and allows it, you know, that island of security to grow to grow bigger. So avoidant positivity, where it's a little bit tentative, redemptive positivity. Um, after that step seven, out of that negative cycle. And then the third one is like installed positivity or that positivity that we know we can trust to test content on. Yeah. I like Thank the you. phrase for that third group. I like the phrase earned positivity. I mean, they've done the work, right? We've, we've gone into the darkest places and found each other. And now it's a different brand of positivity, right? That's what we're that's what we're trying to target there. I don't know if that's a word we want to use, but it is different. It's 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 a different thing to just act nicer than than to really have a positive cycle. So just thinking about the clinical example clips that we might pull to model this, and Ryan, I'm thinking about pursuer playbook the full clinical example of yours where you worked with that positivity for like 20 minutes. And would you say that that was that first level, that tentative positivity? I think so. I mean, it was a couple who uh, had really struggled for a long time. And then they had a big event that happened about two months before. And since then, they've been doing well. So not only was it a little avoidant, it's like, uh, I'm scared if we talk about something difficult, it's going to lose our momentum. And so that it's... And that makes sense, right? But it's more, that would be more like if we're going to call it redemptive or earned, that first one to me is more of a mix. There is some genuine positivity, yeah. but there's also a lot of avoidance. And it's a combination of the two. And it's going to come on a whole spectrum. Some are like coming clearly avoided. Some really believe they're in a positive place and they, they don't even see the degree of avoidance. So again, I don't, I don't think avoided totally captures it, but more like mm -hmm. a word like mixed or something. Or guarded slash tentative or something of that of that nature. It's like kind of like it's there, but I got to protect it, right? Like if I lean fully into it, it's not going to work, or my partner's going to reject it, or um, yeah, maybe mistrusting positivity. So Ryan, if we did what George is talking about in the teach and tested the content on that couple. Do you believe that then you might see that it's not really installed and that really um, it's kind of like a temporary positivity or a tentative positivity? I like temporary. That's not a bad word. But, you know, I like what you're saying, though, George, you got to go towards some of it in a way. Like I had a, a pursuer like this almost burnt out. I had like I had to go towards that positive for a little bit. Of she's like, you know, yeah, she's good, but it was that guarded tentative. We went with it for a little bit. And as I just kind of celebrated and what it's like, it's kind of then all of a sudden, they but can't stay in it. Yeah. But <laughs> and then, then she was kind of able to talk about the negative, but she wasn't talking about it because every time I go towards the negative, he shuts down, he gets defensive. And yeah, I mean, it's an anchor. That's why it's they're just going to something that feels safer. So that to me is what the temporary is. They can't stay in the positivity because they don't really have a positive cycle. Yes. They just don't have, you know, that's a natural byproduct of working together and making progress on the negative cycle. So there is some truth to the positivity, but it's not, it has no roots. It has no legs to stay. So once you kind of roll with it, they can't stay in it, mm -hmm. right? Which is a real test of positivity. Sometimes we can overthink this too. Sometimes quantity gives you information. So I can't tell you how many times I've been in supervision with someone who's doing a great job, but they're like, I think this is stage two. I'm not sure. And so one simple question is, well, how many successful enactments have you done with them? How many times has this person gone into pain and had a successful enactment? And often the answer is uh, just once or twice. Right. And so that, that's sometimes the quantity. It's not always the only way to think about it, but a, a quantity gives you an idea about what kind of positivity is there. So, you know, in, in a business relationship or something with I'm pointing out my bank over here. You know, if I have a little conflict with the teller, we can just change how we are and, and that's fine. But in an intimate relationship of this magnitude, there is the need for more of the earned um, positivity, meaning meaning the positivity is because we've been in pain together and that's what bonds people for life. So I, I think, I think sometimes math can be helpful there. Not to sound like John Gottman, but 
<laughs> so what we want to show in a clinical example clip of a of a stage three would be somebody tracking that positive cycle. It's it's the it's the unpacking. That's what therapists need to see, the unpacking of the positive, to take something like good and give it some specificity, right? That, that's what EFT therapists have very little practice doing. And because they don't really do a lot of stage three work, they don't know how to really work with positivity early in the treatment either. So like, this is the best chance for us to get better at positivity. When they're in a resource place and they're feeling safe, like they have their best tolerance to kind of hang out there. I mean, and there is, you said that in your teach, there is a vulnerability to staying in positive affect, to try to put words to what it feels like to be safe, to feel like, you know, your partner really does love you, that you're worthy. Like the, people have no words for these things and, you know, helping them try to put words to what it feels like to be worthy. Like that's fantastic. It is, and it's a, it will be a tragedy for a couple to do the work and then i mean relapses happen sometimes for good reasons but it will be a tragedy for a couple to do the work and then relapse just from a lack of practice yep we don't have the words to talk about when it's good i've forgotten mm -hmm. the ability to tell you that you're beautiful or i've forgotten the ability to say how much this sexual experience means to me and in the absence of good what's going to come take its place so I think it's really important that that we anchor that and, and make sure we explore, maybe that's a word, um, exactly what that looks like and give people's bodies the chance to uh, to really refine their language uh, of being together when things are not hurting. So I hope you've enjoyed getting a sneak peek into the conversations that our team has to put the modules together in a way that's gonna impact you the most, whether it's showing the right clips from a clinical example or showing the right demonstration or helping you understand what it is that we want you to practice. This is how we put it all together. And as we were thinking through how this shows up, we recognize these three different places and wanted to bring that to you as well. So that wraps up our evolution one of module 13, the teach in two parts and a bonus. We look forward to finishing up the rest of our module so that you can have the demonstration and clinical example and application exercise, all the other pieces that'll be coming to you real soon.